let's do this. Next, we're going to talk to Baked Alaska, who's calling in from New York. Baked Alaska, you've called in before, and last time you scared me because I thought you were the infamous like Nazi guy, Baked Alaska. But you're not. You're like a different <laughs> Baked Alaska, which I don't know why you keep the name, but uh, yeah, that's your business, I guess. What's going on, Baked Alaska? Yeah, what's up, man? <clears throat> um, so, uh, okay, so this is what I wanted to talk about. Um, I was curious what you guys thought was maybe the, the, the top or maybe your, your best argument for God not existing. Um, and okay. the reason I ask is just because what I did, um, the, the way I basically became a theist was by looking at the arguments and the evidence on both, on basically both sides. Like I watched a lot of debates and things like that. And I ended up just basically, uh, falling on the side that, uh, the arguments were better, uh, for God existing than, than the opposite. Um, so that's, that's why I ask it's, you know, a constant learning process for me. So I was curious what, uh, what your guys views were. Sure. Uh, Aaron, you want to take this first? Yeah, I'll, I can take this first. So my argument is that there's too many gods, that if God was real, that there would be a consistent story from all, for all of human history, from, uh, the beginning all the way down to now, a consistent message, a cons consistent story, but there are too many religions out there for there to be a, a single God that, that has a single message to share with us. And they all started, they all started different periods of time and they all end at different periods of time. That, that would be my best argument. It's a Dan. Okay. Um, can I ask a follow up question about that? Yeah. Okay. Do, do you think um, the, they're man? Do you basically think they're man made religions? The other, like the, the, all these different religions, right? Yeah. I, I take the position that uh, religions are man-made. Yeah. Okay. So if like, for example, Christianity was true, why would it invalidate Christianity if, if other people just started making up their own religions? It, it wouldn't necessarily, but the Christian religion technically started with Jesus Christ. Uh, if you look back in, in those, in all the early writings, there were several different flavors of Christianity. Uh, some of them rejected the Old Testament. Some of them accepted the New Testament and the Old Testament. Uh, some of them mixed the two, mixed it and and kind of remixed it and made it their own. And uh, and even Christian and then Christianity came out of Judaism. And even Judaism, it had a beginning. Uh, but human history mm -hmm. was way before Judaism. If God, if the Ju if the Ju if the Jewish God was real, how come he waited until five thousand years before Jesus was born to, to make an appearance? You know. Because human history, what, 10,000 well, years recorded to human history? 10, 12,000 years, something like that? I yeah. mean, why did he wait 7,000 years to make an appearance? You're saying, why did he wait? Why did God wait for Jesus? Like the 5,000 years you're saying in reference to Jesus, right? Yeah, why, or why did he wait? Well, Christianity comes out of Judaism, so why did he wait until Moses, right? Why did uh, to well, make an appearance? There, right? I mean, that's, there's, there's, or Abraham I mean, or Christians have, Right. I mean, I've heard like apologetic explanations for that, um, that are based upon not in terms of the number of years, but in terms of the population of the world and that for conditions to be ripe for, uh, Jesus's message to take, uh, to take hold. Right. And so there was relative stability in, the, in that area of the world. Um, actually only a tiny percentage of the world's population has, has actually, it had actually existed prior to Jesus, uh, Jesus's birth. Right? right. And so like, um, so, so from that perspective, it's not like that. It's not really that early on in the history of humanity that, that Jesus came. Um, Let's talk about this. How old do you I'm think sorry. humanity it is? Was, it, it was very early on. I'm sorry. It was very early on. Sorry to interrupt you, Baked Alaska. How old do you think humanity is? I think humanity is somewhere around approximately like 500,000 to like 750,000 years old. Yeah. Okay. So that's, uh, that's depending on what you mean by humans, right? Obviously there's differences in how anthropologists talk about. It. Yeah. I, I'd say that's, that that's a, at least a fair summation. You could say uh, that's a perspective. That's a, that's a long time. I mean, even if we're talking about like, and, and just to bolster Aaron's point here, right? 
you're right in that technically, yes, population sizes are not going to be matched up with uh, population sizes in like a post agricultural society, right? We're talking about hunter gatherer groups, very small, right? But we are talking about a lot of people that are unsaved. And before that, of course, if we're following a materialist understanding of history, if we're looking at um, the world from that perspective, we're also seeing human beings evolved, right? We're 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 seeing human beings coming from another animal, right? And still being animals themselves. I mean, does that align in your worldview as well? Well, I mean, my, I tend, I do tend to think, and, and there's actually been some, some literature out recently on this, uh, dating uh, Adam, and, Adam and Eve back to um, that, those, those prehistoric times. Um, mm. So I don't, I don't think there's really, there, I don't think there needs to be any inconsistency with what, like, the science tells us and what, like, the Christian uh, worldview says. Um, I, I think they, they, they can line up there. Um, but just in terms of the, the other point Aaron mentioned, I mean, Aaron, don't you think that the fact that so many people all over the world in all different societies, like, believe in God, I mean, isn't that generally evidence of something being true? I mean, do we generally desire something? that doesn't exist. I believe that, um, I, I don't, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know on how, I'm not sure how innate a belief in God is to human beings. I'm not sure if I'm aware of any studies that, that would, um, uh, that have, that have studied that have come to an understanding of that. I think we're emotion, we're mammals. So we're emotion, we're emotional creatures where we have emotions and emotions kind of rule the day as far as we're concerned. Um, to kind of, you know, push us to and fro with their silliness. <laughs> and so I think yeah. there's probably an emotional component to wanting to believe in some higher power. Um, like the previous caller, you know, there, there's something when things get tough and rough, that's just, I think it's normal to, to reach out to something to want to feel connected to something, um, out there to, to make it better, to solve the problem, uh, to improve things. But that doesn't necessarily mean that there's something out there actually listening or even capable of listening. Yeah, I, I agree. It doesn't necessarily. Yeah, I, I would agree. It doesn't necessarily mean that. But I just think that an inference could be drawn um, that it may, because we generally don't desire things that don't exist. Yeah, just, I, I, just kinda steer, right? I just kind of steer. I just kind of steer away from making don't. those. Yeah, I just kind of make steer away from making those inferences because. Um, if God really wanted to know us, he was there, he, he'd make it a little clearer. I think I, I, I would, I'd want, if I was in God's position and I wanted people to know that I, I existed, I'd make it a little clearer and not, not like people defend, depend on emotional inferences. Right. So, no, this is a good point. And I think this is actually one of the better, like, uh, objections, um, is, is like divine hidden as why, why isn't it more clear that God exists? And I think there, the question is whether for some subset of people, whether even if they were given more evidence, whether they would believe, right. Whether they would come, go into a saving relationship with God. Um, so that's, that's sort of independent, right. Of what the level of evidence is like, if you guys, if you guys knew God existed, would you worship him? If we're talking about Yahweh, no, uh, I don't think he would be worthy of worship. But there's different concepts okay, of the Christian so God, so it kind of depends. Okay, so why? So assume let's just stick with Christianity. Why would God need to provide you more evidence if you're you're already you're not going to worship him? You're not going to go into a saving relationship with him, right? So what would be the purpose of God providing you more evidence so you could sperm? Well, I mean. If he wants me to acknowledge his existence and at least consider it, he has to be there, right? Just because I wouldn't worship him doesn't mean other people wouldn't. I don't know why he would have to be divinely hidden from me uh, and also divinely hidden from those that would worship him. Well, but that's but that's the issue, right? Like because he's not divinely hidden for for other sub, other sets of people. So we're just talking about the subset of people that don't believe in him. And then yeah. the question becomes right, and um, yeah, yeah so I, I, would, I would just entire, counter. That's, I would I would counter. Why is God hidden to some but not to others? Yeah, like that's why weird. 
the why do the entire why do the aborigines don't get to be go to heaven right or, or or don't get to have a relationship with the christian god you know like why is it that a particular sect of people within the middle east and then more broadly after that uh you know the western world gets to have a relationship with god but folks in indigenous communities around the world uh even post christianity's you know rise as a global power still don't have an acknowledgement that even he's a thing right to me that seems strange to me if anything that points to the locality of the religion right the locality of the phenomenon i think that gives evidence to christianity being a cultural tradition in a local human idea rather than a divine one well i mean there there seems to be like a tension here because like earlier aaron was saying like because there's all these different religions that's a reason not to believe in christianity Yes, but then when we find examples of like people not having a religion, that's a, that's a reason not to believe in Christianity, right? And so like, I, I don't I don't think you could. I'm not saying like you guys are doing this, but I'm just saying like I don't think you could have it both ways, right? Well, like, I think Aaron's point was there needs to be a consistency within the Christian story, right? There seems to be an inconsistency in the narrative at which Christianity portrays its origins and specifically Judaism as well, versus what seems to be the apparent case in reality. Like you were talking about how scientists have uh, can trace ourselves back to Adam and Eve. I'm not sure about like those kinds of specific claims, but I don't think that's a view that Aaron has or that I have. I, I think the history that Christianity portrays itself as having doesn't necessarily line up with the historical reality. Um, and it seems to be more of a local phenomenon. At least I, I don't want to put words in Aaron's mouth, but... I'm oh, assuming yeah. that's it's, it seems most yeah. religions are local phenomenon, which would yeah. lead me to believe that there's not a universal God speaking to people universally. Yeah. Otherwise you'd have the same God appearing in different cultures across continents, uh, across time. And you just don't, you just don't see that. You see religion starting with specific groups of people and going from there and spreading mm -hmm. as, because uh, uh, if you and I were to sit down and we were to design, we were designed as a system. Okay. We're God. And we want our children to, um, to follow, learn about us and follow us. We could come up with about a million different ways of doing that, that are better than the current way that God supposedly is using. So you could come up with a better way that people would be able to freely choose to go into a saving relationship with God. I think so. And w w w how would that be accomplished? By sending the same message to uh, the same places on the earth at the same time, maybe by yeah. um, by making sure that false messages don't get spread um, by actually making sure that there's no hit divine hiddenness that if some, that everybody gets a message that there's a consistent, repeatable, reliable way for everybody to come to know that God exists and is real instead of, having a certain subset select group of people that get to have those experiences and other people that don't get to have those experiences. And then people can choose from themselves whether they want, whether they want to enter into that relationship or not. And there's still, there's still, there's no, there's no proof. There's, there's high suggestions of it because of all these, you know, unique things that are happening at the same time across the world, but it's, there's no, uh, yeah, that's off the top of my head. Right. Well, I think a lot of I think a lot of some of those things that you mentioned at least are are consequences of free like free will and people um, uh, choosing to to go their own path, right? So there's nothing like God can't make people freely do things. Oh no, yeah, I totally agree you know, with that. Either, yeah, so there, I think so. I think that's that's part of it, but. Um, so, but be, besides like hidden, uh, divine hiddenness and, um, the other thing we mentioned, like, is there any other compelling, uh, objectively down? Why did you say you wouldn't worship God, even if you knew he existed? Well, uh, first let me say when it comes to the free will thing, right? Uh, yes, you could argue that a free will component is there. Let's say for the sake of army, free will is a thing, right? Um, the choice still has to be there. The choice isn't there for me right now. I can't even choose to have a relationship with God if I don't think he's real, right? 
Um, it's it's kind of like, can I choose to believe the Earth is flat? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm I'm kind of compelled to believe that the Earth isn't because I have an understanding of evidence. I have an understanding of science. I have an understanding of uh, philosophy. I have an understanding of a lot of subjects that like prevent me from having that belief. I could like, if, if I said that the earth was flat, I'd be pretending it wouldn't be true to my beliefs. So I would not want to pretend with a God belief either. Even if I thought it was the right thing to do, I want to be something that I have a genuine belief in. So I'll start with that first, but yeah. when talking about not worshiping him, um, I, I choose the position as an atheist to mean that, I don't know what a God is until somebody defines it for me, right? Um, I can't evaluate the God claim until somebody gives me a God claim to work with. So if you say God is just nature, okay, yeah, I believe in nature. I guess that means I believe in God, right? Um, we have a tendency in philosophy, particularly Western philosophy, to talk about the Christian God. And I think that that is a sort of leftover from, you know, uh, a history of Christianity like being so inundated with philosophical literature, like just in part of the culture that it's kind of a holdout from that. And so to be fair to other God claims, I have to be like, well, I have to evaluate it first. But if we're talking about the Christian God and why I wouldn't mm -hmm. uh, worship him, uh, the classical Christian God seems to me to violate every intuition I have about what is right and what is wrong. Now, maybe I don't know what right and wrong is, Maybe it's just my human concepts, and maybe it has no meaning. But if I were to be a judge, or if I were to have some understanding, some semblance of what right and wrong is, uh, I can't, again, choose that, right? It's something that I just believe or I don't believe. And I do have a sense of what is right and wrong. And I think the Christian God has violated that <laughs> on many, many different accounts, both Old and New Testament versions of, of that God. Uh, so because of that violation, I don't think he's worthy of worship. I'm not sure if there's a being that's like worthy of worship anyway. I think the concept of worship is kind of weird in itself. Um, but I would at least not follow their tenets, right? I don't think the Christian formula is the good recipe is a good recipe to make a good person. In other words, um, I think it can lead you to problematic ideas. So, uh, that's why I wouldn't follow him. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, uh, um, if if for the sake of argument, like the that not only was it like established that God existed, but the Christian God existed in terms of like which the the, the concept obviously of the Christian God is like that God is all good, right? If you mm -hmm. knew that God was all good, would you wor would you worship Him then? If if I knew that God was all good, then I must have a different understanding of what good is than what I understand it to be now. Yeah. God would have some explaining okay. to do. So that's, it's kind of difficult well, for me to say, it's possible. kind of like saying, what it's would, not, what would fit, what would uh, water do in the universe where physics is different? It's like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not there. You know what I mean? I'm in this but, universe. Well, I, I guess what I'm getting, I guess what I'm getting at, do you think it's possible that something's gotten lost? Like, could something be lost in translation? Right? Like, if, for example, God exists and he is all good, and, and we just take that, like, you know, um, as a, pre, like, as a, as a presuppos presupposition, um, mm -hmm. then something's gotten lost in translation, like, either in the way things were written in the Old Testament or the New Testament, right? If he yes. was all good, would you then, do you think then that... If, uh, would if you he was all good, then the Bible is not a reliable account of who God is. And so in that sense, I really don't know who God is then. Yeah. I, 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 let's assume that, let's assume the Bible's not correct, but yeah. you know that there's a supreme being that created the universe and he's all, he's perfect and he's all good, morally speaking. Would you worship in them? Yeah, maybe. But I, would I even be a Christian at that point? Okay. Okay. Because uh, okay. like if we're saying the Bible is straight up wrong, I don't know what that says about the Jesus narrative. I don't know what that says about a lot of Christian theology, right? So I may not even be a Christian at that point. I may be something else. Yeah. Well, I, I, I mean, that, what we think, right, there's a book called um, Is God a Moral Monster, right? Because mm -hmm. a lot of these things in the Old Testament, like 
um, raise these questions like they do. I mean, Christians have struggled with these issues for you know centuries. Um, but um, so I don't think there's really that much of a difference between us because like I'm sure that things that you find objectionable, like morally, like I do as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sure our morals are very probably 99 percent or nine. I shouldn't say 99, but like 90 percent aligned, right? So there has to be something that's like. I guess what I'm saying is I like think, there's well, there's explanation. What we have in why, common, you mean? Like, yeah, like I'm sure, like I'm sure, like the, I, you seem like a good guy. Obviously, we we don't know each other. We've never met or anything. We don't. But like, I'm I appreciate sure, that. Like you're a good person. <laughs> yeah, and so like I don't think like you, the things that bother you that are in the Bible, like they would bother me too. Right, yes. if they cannot be explained, if there's no way yes, contextualizing them, and yeah, so well, our explanations so will be different, though. Here's here's my take on this, Bakelas. Sorry to interrupt you because uh, I don't mean to cut you short. We do have to. We have a bunch of calls here, but yeah, yeah. here's the thing, right? In my point of view, the reason why I think you and I might share a lot of moral intuitions uh, is because we both grew up in 21st century America, right? Uh, I think like we have a lot of secular values that we probably have in common. Um, and I think our perspectives are probably going to be different if we grew up in a different time and place. Right. Uh, same thing with our objections of the Bible. If you're able to find something that gives you peace with your interpretation of the Bible, uh, more power to you. But my interpretation and explanation is that this is made up by people and that's what gives me peace about it. Right. I don't have to say, well, I think, Maybe there's a mistranslation here, or maybe the message isn't getting through, or maybe the Bible um, isn't just an accurate depiction, or maybe I'm not getting the right, uh, you know, understanding of what's going on. I can just rest happy and say, yeah, I think it was all made up from the beginning, <laughs> you know. And so there's going to be a difference there in, in how right. we have that understanding. I don't need the Bible to have an understanding of morality, thankfully. And I, I don't think you do, too, either, for the record. I don't think any Christian does. Yeah. Um, but I don't have to rely on the Bible for anything, honestly, other than what the Bible says, which is also weird because there's different understandings of what even that is. So I don't know. But I'll let you say some well, final thoughts before is. we let you go. Yeah, sure. And I enjoyed I enjoyed the conversation as always. I mean, I I, I guess I would just leave you and and uh, the 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 listeners with um, that, uh, that reference to that book uh, is God a moral monster. I think it was written by Paul Copin um, because um, I feel like we all are kind of on the search for truth and we, we have to keep an open mind. And a lot of the objections that we have, there are answers to the objections. We may not find them convincing, but a lot of times people don't even know they they're out there. Right. And they just hear mm-hmm. things and they don't, they're not inclined to like take the step to be like, uh, like, am I um, to, to falsify their own views? Like, I think you have to proactively try to falsify your own views. Um, that was what prompted me to call in and ask you guys for your, you know, arguments against God existing, et cetera. Um, but of course we're all biased and, you know, I, 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 that's the challenge, right? Like we all have a, a sort of a position established of, of sorts and, I think you can change it. I mean, ultimately, I think you can. I've heard people say, like, you don't choose your beliefs. I think you kind of do, though, in a way, based upon, like, how open you are to changing them. Um, so unless you guys have anything else, I could leave uh, you and go back to the, the wonderful chat. Sounds good, Baked Alaska. I do appreciate you calling in. Uh, tell you what, I will check out the book. I see it's on uh, Amazon. Uh, I'll, I'll give it a look through, and then maybe next time you call in, I can have a more informed opinion about what I think about it. 